Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth lesson on HTTP requests. In the previous lesson, you have learned how to make an HTTP GET request and use the data retrieved inside your scenario. In this lesson, you will learn how to make an HTTP POST request and send data to an API endpoint. For this demonstration, let's use a web service called short.io. This is an advanced URL shortener service with an API you can use in your scenarios. In order to use the service, you first need to create an account. Once your account is successfully created, a subdomain will automatically be assigned to your account. As you can see, for this example, the subdomain is in takermatexample.shortcm.li. If you're planning on using this service regularly, you can also assign a custom domain to your account. Once you are inside your account dashboard, you can open the sidebar menu and select the integrations and API option. On this page, you will be provided with an API key that you can use in order to perform various GET and POST requests. Now, let's take a look at the API documentation in order to get an idea of the endpoints available and the requests that can be made. As you can see on the sidebar, the documentation page is split up into different sections. For this example, let's navigate over to the link editing section and click on Create URL. This is a POST request that will allow you to shorten a long URL. However, together with the long URL, you can provide many other parameters such as a duration before the short URL expires, an iPhone URL, which is where the user will be re redirected if they are on an iPhone device, and a lot more. On the right-hand side, you can see an example of requests being made to this endpoint using different programming languages. Below, you can see the response of the request. Note that with many APIs you decide to use, the request examples provided on the documentation page might not be very clear, especially if you're not familiar with the programming languages provided. You don't have to worry though, because if you look closely, the fields and parameters that these requests have are also part of the HTTP app in a Tegra map. Let's see this in action. By constructing this exact request inside in Tegra map using the HTTP module. So the first item required in this request is a request method which, in this case, is POST. That was easy. The second item required is the URL. Now the third and fourth items are actually header items. This is something new you haven't seen in this course so far. The idea is that every request you make also includes a header. You can think of a header as another part of the request that you can add data to. This data is hidden and is not added to the request URL. In this example, the header needs to include an accept application JSON parameter, which indicates that response of the request needs to be of data type JSON in order to be accepted. Let's add this parameter to the request. The name will be accept and the value will be application JSON. Great. The second header parameter is the authorization key, or in other words, the API key. Let's add this to the request as well. The name will be authorization, and the key will be the one generated inside the API dashboard of your short CM account. The third and final header parameter is the content type, which indicates the data type of the content that will be passed along this request. In this case, the data type will be JSON. Let's add this parameter to the request. Perfect. The request header is now ready. The final element is the data. This is where you can define all the parameters such as the URL to be shortened, the domain you want to use, and so on. Now in the example seen in the previous videos, the data was being passed to the API request as a query string. In this example, however, the data needs to be passed to the body of the request as a JSON object as you can see here. The first thing you need to do is select the body type. Let's select raw which will then open up a new selector, content type. 
As specified in the header of this request, the content type of this request is JSON. Therefore, the correct selection will be JSON. Finally, on the input box below, let's copy paste the sample request body from the documentation page. As you can see, the first part of each parameter denotes the name of the parameter and the second part denotes the value. The easiest way to add new parameters to this request is by visually aligning all the values on the interactive documentation page. This will generate a JSON object which can then be copied over to the body of the request. Let's assign the domain to the one created with the Stemro account. Let's assign the original URL to google.com. And finally, let's give this link a title, Google. As you can see, the JSON object was automatically generated and can now be transferred over to the HTTP module. The request is almost ready. The final thing to do is to make sure to select the parse response option to make sure that the response from the server is automatically converted to an Integromat friendly format. Now, let's save the scenario and execute it once to see if everything works as planned. This request should create a short URL using the assigned domain that when visited should redirect the user to google.com. The scenario has successfully executed. Let's click on the bubble icon to see the response of this request. As you can see, a short URL was successfully created. Let's try and visit this URL in a new browser window to make sure that it works as expected. Great, the URL redirects to google.com. Congratulations, you have successfully made your first post request to a fairly complex API. So to recap, API documentation can sometimes be a little bit more complex to understand because the examples of requests given might be written in different programming languages that you're not familiar with. However, the principles of a request are always the same, no matter what language the request is written and performed with. Take a closer look at the documentation examples, and you should be able to identify the different parameters you need to include in your HTTP module in order to perform the same request inside Integromat. The header of a request allows the client and the server to pass additional information with an HTTP request, such as the API key, the content type of the body, and so on. Depending on the API you are making a request to, it might sometimes be necessary to include all the data and parameters in the body of the request rather than in the query string. The type in which this data should be written is usually JSON. And this concludes the lesson on the HTTP POST request. In the next lesson, you will learn more about HTTP request authorization. See you there.